Good morning, everybody. My name is Anna Messner. So our topic today is uh, noisy breathing. So here's our, a typical patient. It's gonna be a fair amount of listening here. All right, so that is a very short snippet of Strider. And what is Strider? Its technical description is a harsh, high-pitched breath sound such as one often heard on inhalation with the laryngeal obstruction. But the real definition that most people use is just noisy breathing. And why do we care? Well, this, this little session we're doing today, we're going to talk a lot of Strider about, about Strider and actually listen to some because it's really important to pay attention to the type of noisy breathing. And the key things you want to tell are one, is it inspiratory? Do you just hear it when the baby's breathing in? Is it biphasic? Is it when the baby is breathing in and out? Or is it expiratory, which is also known as wheezing? And if you can tell what type of strider it is, then you can have a good idea of what the problem is. So now what we're gonna do, very briefly, I have six different sounds, and you can only use your ears. There is no pictures, no other clues, just listening. And for each sound, I'm gonna play it, and to, yours, to you guys listen, and then you need to t ask yourself, is it inspiratory or is it biphasic? Okay, I'm, I didn't put any expiratory in. Make it easy. All right, here we go. Okay, so I, I didn't do the question thing just because it tends to prolong things, but all those who think it's inspiratory, raise their hand. Great. All those that think it's biphasic. Good. Inspiratory, absolutely. And we'll go into what that means in a minute. Next one. All right, all those that think it's inspiratory all that thinks it's biphasic. Absolutely correct, you guys are good. And the other thing, and I'm gonna play the rest of it, when you listen to this, I want you to listen to how wet it sounds, okay? Because that's a real warning sign. This baby is having trouble managing their saliva and they are probably in a good bit of trouble right now. So let me just listen as you listen to the rest of it. You can just hear the saliva bouncing around in there. Next one. All right, oh, who thinks it's inspiratory? Yep, who thinks it's biphasic? Yeah. This one is actually probably more inspiratory, but it's a different quality. Notice that it is more of a musical type sound, and that's the other thing. So first thing you want to do is figure out inspiratory or biphasic, and then is it non-musical like the first one we heard, or is it more musical? And this one is more musical, so we'll just play it again. Okay, next one. All right, who thinks it's inspiratory? Yeah, who thinks it's biphasic? Okay, it's more inspiratory, but what you really notice is how fast this baby is breathing. Right? And that is incredibly, that's one of the warning signs. So, and if you picture in your mind what this baby looks like, you can just almost see them retracting in your brain uh, uh, as they do it. So take a listen again. 
The other thing is it's not particularly musical. All right, two more. Little apnea. <laughs> All right, who thinks it's inspiratory? Who thinks it's biphasic? Yeah, definitely biphasic with apnea. And fairly musical, actually. All right, last one. Now that's a little bit of a trick question because it's really not like strider of what we think from the larynx. It is much more sturder or snoring, right? And that is probably by far the most common noisy breathing that your patients will report to you is the snoring. That's the kids. All right, next, so let's go back to our baby again, and I'm gonna play the same little snippet, and I want you to think, now that we've listened to those types of strider, what kind of strider does this baby have? Okay, who thinks it's more inspiratory? Yeah, that's more inspiratory. And it's also not very musical, and it is intermittent, which is really the most common patient that you will see. So what we would do is we would actually take a little scope in the clinic and actually look at the larynx, which is a, a great thing. And what this baby has is by far the most common cause of strider in an infant, which is laryngomalacia. This up here is a picture of a normal baby larynx. Notice how well you can see the vocal cords. Here's the epiglottis, here's the arytenoids, and here's a nice looking airway. And here's what happens with the laryngomalacia. Is that you have a curled epiglottis, you have trouble seeing the vocal folds, and then as the baby breathes in, everything collapses until where they, until where they are breathing through this tiny little pinhole. That's laryngomalacia. It is at the level of the larynx. It is above the vocal cords. It collapses. It's a neurologic immaturity, uh, which tends to improve uh, with age. And I just want to make a comment about what is laryngomalacia versus what is tr tracheomalacia. A lot of people get these terms confused. Laryngomalacia is exactly what we look at. It is extremely common. It tends to get better. Tracheomalacia is below the vocal cords. This would be a normal child's trachea. And in tracheomalacia, what you see is collapse. It looks more like a fish mouth. The strider tends to be more expiratory with tracheomalacia. Uh, and it is not very common. It is a di whole different entity. And along this line, I just want to try and stamp out the term laryngotracheomalacia, which is what a lot of people say when they really don't know. <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's just cover all our bases. But you can have a child with laryngomalacia and tracheomalacia, but they are two separate things. So if you don't know, say laryngomalacia, and you're going to be right most of the time. All right, so in laryngomalacia, what can you do? You have a baby with very mild inspiratory strider. Do we need to necessarily see them? No, probably not. But it needs to be strictly inspiratory and it needs to be mild. So what we would do is say, follow the weights. How is this baby feeding? What, at, what we find is that some babies, they're gaining weight okay, but these families, instead of having 15 minute feeds, they're taking like 45 minutes out of every two hours. And these are just amazing families that are going to get the foods into their, to their uh, babies, but they are really struggling. Uh, watch for a lot of reflux, that's a problem. Uh, and sometimes we will treat them with anti-reflux medications. And then the good news is that the vast majority get better with time. You can just reassure the families they get better. But 
What about the ones that aren't doing so well? So here is a little guy with inspiratory strider. Clearly has failure to thrive when you look at it. When I show some uh, students and stuff for this picture, uh, they all say, oh, he's got some kind of chest deformity. No, he doesn't. He's just cachectic. He's just very uh, thin. And in these cases, what we do is we can actually do a surgery through the mouth called a supraglottoplasty where we go in, we can, here's the omega-shaped epiglottis, here's the arytenoid cartilages. What we do is we just trim off a little bit of this extra tissue. Uh, now, notice afterwards, you can now see the vocal cords. Here's the airway. And these babies typically do very, very well. And this is that same baby. Here he is at two months. Here he is at four months where he's working on his double chin, right? <laughs> so all it did was just improving his airway a little bit. All right, now here's another baby. We have another uh, little one who is a preemie babe. He, obviously, he's still in the nursery. He has a little bit of a feeding tube, which in itself is a hint. So take a listen. Now this little one, think about it. Who thinks it's inspiratory? Who thinks it's more biphasic? Yeah. This little one is more biphasic. Exactly. And notice it's biphasic musical sounding, which in musical tends to go along with a problem at the level of the vocal cords. So biphasic musical sounding. And notice he's a little bit hoarse, okay? Especially at the end of the recording. Take a listen again, which is another hint. A little bit hoarse there. And this little guy has a unilateral vocal cord paralysis. He was a preemie, he had a PDA ligation, he had his uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve either stretched or, or some damaged in some way, uh, and he has a vocal cord that's not working. Hopefully temporary, hopefully it'll come back, but this can happen in the result. And the risk for these babies are that you have trouble not just with your voice, we, that can get better, but in addition, you can have some feeding issues and risk of aspiration. With vocal cord paralysis, the strider tends to be more high-pitched, like we mentioned, a little bit musical, and they are mainly inspiratory, but it can be a little bit expiratory also. What you do, same thing. Remember, in the trade-off between breathing and feeding, breathing will win. Right, so the kids will concentrate on their breathing, but it means they're feeding and they're gaining weight may be a problem. And then make note of the voice. All right, here's another baby in the nursery. <coughs> All right, notice the one other thing with him. So it's more inspiratory as opposed to biphasic, but notice how the head bobbing. Okay, he is using his accessory muscles to breathe. This is not a good sign, okay? If you see head bobbing, that is a worrisome feature. I also want to point that the day I recorded that in the nursery, his, his twin happened to be there who was already home and I just recorded him breathing. That's how a baby should breathe, okay? <laughs> I don't want you to get used to all these noisy babies, right? So babies should be relatively quiet. All right, and this little guy actually had bilateral vocal cord paralysis and some subglottic stenosis. And just uh, one, one comment, so you can have bilateral vocal cords. The vocal cords should open in and out. So here they're closed, here they're open. I sometimes get the question, well, if they're paralyzed, they can't be paralyzed because the baby's making noise, right? That's actually not true. How much noise the baby makes depends on the position that they're in. So if they're closed like this, the voice is great. The baby just can't breathe. If it's open like this, the voice is awful, but the baby breathes just fine and aspirates like a feed, okay? All right, next. So here's another one. So 
So this one is a lot more subtle. Could you even hear it? It's a lot more subtle. It is not a superglottic type sound above the vocal cords, and it is much more biphasic. If you ever hear true biphasic strider, that is a big worrisome sign and needs to be further evaluated. And this baby ended up having a stenotic trachea, so tracheal stenosis. Notice that if you look at the video, you can see that the cartilage rings went all the way around as opposed to just in the anterior part of the trachea. So the take home messages, lots of things cause strider, laryngomalacia is by far the most common. If you don't know, or if you're concerned about the feeding or the weight gain or the voice or sleep apnea, uh, a flexible lot laryngoscopy can easily be performed without sedation or anesthesia in the ENT office. The red flags to remember are biphasic strider, high pitch, which is musical because the musical suggests the vocal cords are involved, head bobbing or the use of accessory muscles, feeding issues, failure to thrive, severe reflex and strider, and then of course cyanosis and apnea. And I'm going to leave you with one last video. This is probably this is actually an older child, a two-year-old, but uh, the most common uh, noisy breathing you will hear, because I don't want to completely forget it. So she went into her pediatrician saying that she had noisy breathing. And there she is with a boring video after her tonsils came out.